All right, I just got done skateboarding over there behind the Burke stop on the Market Frankfurt L in Fishtown, Philadelphia. And now I'm headed towards the IGA supermarket in Port Richmond, Philadelphia. So today, uh, I wanted to talk about yet another thing that I've talked about before in Jiu-Jitsu, which is this idea of building an internal video camera. And what that means is uh, when you roll, when you do positional sparring, free rolling, any kind of sparring, I think it's very important that you develop a good memory for what happens during the rolls. And that doesn't mean that you have to memorize every single detail that happens during a six minute roll. That's very, very difficult, if not impossible, um, for many people. But what I am saying is that it's helpful to remember targeted parts of your rolls and uh, so that you can later then think about what happened during that part of the roll and then learn from it, right? Sounds obvious. Pay attention, remember, and then try to fix the mistakes that you made and learn from them. Um, sorry, I just got to make sure somebody just ran a red light, so I want to make sure I don't get smashed when I'm crossing the street. Um, so, but the thing that's not as obvious about that is that there has to be some kind of, or it's a lot easier to do this if there's some kind of structure underneath what you're, what you're doing when you roll. So, if, for example, if you have no plan when you're rolling and you're just like slap hands and then, you know, just try to like do, randomly roll the dice and do whatever techniques you remember, then it's a lot harder to remember what happens during the roll because you're not, it's kind of like, like if you just randomly start saying words that, you know, like just, you know, cat, mouse, house, rabbit, dog fight, underhook, like whatever pops into your head without any sort of sentence structure, it's gonna be much harder for you to remember the sentence that you just spoke than it is if you say those same words in an organized sentence. Like, the cat ran down the street and the mouse chased the cat because the cat stole the mouse's baby mouse. That's a lot easier to remember and then to look at later on and try to improve your grammar and your pronunciation and uh, sentence structure than it is to just randomly say words. And so it's the same thing in jiu-jitsu. If you have a plan, today my goal is going to be to slap hands with uh, Todd. And when I train with Todd, I know he's got an excellent underhook half guard. So my goal is to force top a half guard. When he tries to play underhook, I'm gonna use my left arm to frame in his neck, pin his head down and pummel for my own underhook. Once I get my own underhook, I'm gonna get cross face pressure, pass to the mount, and then uh, head and arm choke from there. So that's my plan. That's the sentence that I want to try when I speak to Todd later on. And when I train with Todd later on, what's going to happen is either I'm going to be successful completely with that plan, or he's going to find some wrinkle in that plan that he can exploit and poke a hole in it. And that plan is going to fail at some point. And so since I had a plan in the first place, I can then try to improve the plan based on where Todd uh, poked a hole in it. So for example, if Todd plays underhook half guard and my goal is to force half guard frame in the neck and I can't even frame in the neck, I know that that's the part that I need to work on. If I frame in the neck and I'm able to pummel my elbow inside of his bicep to recover my own underhook and then get cross face pressure, but I can't go to the mount because he keeps me locked in like a quarter guard, then that clearly is a part that I need to work on. And all of those problems are gonna be way easier to remember because I had a clear sentence that I was trying to speak to Todd when I was rolling with him, rather than just randomly spamming words at him uh, or randomly spamming techniques. So the internal video camera is a lot easier to develop if 
you have some kind of plan for what you're doing. And so this is why one of the first pieces of advice that I give white belts when I first start teaching them and when they first start rolling is to have one move from every major position. Because when you have one move from every major position, then that gives you a clear set of sentences that you can then speak in most of the situations that you're gonna run into. And then you can remember what happened when you tried to speak that sentence during rolling and then try to improve from there. Whereas if they just learn random techniques, what ends up happening is they know too many, they know too many techniques and they get confused or they don't know any techniques for a certain situation and they get confused. If they have one technique from every major position, then they have something that they can gravitate towards in every major position. And then they can more easily remember what happened. Like I was on bottom of the mount and I tried that elbow escape move that you showed me, Josh, but I couldn't. And then I can say, well, why couldn't you elbow escape? And they'll say, I, you know, I couldn't turn to my side. And then I can help them diagnose from there and say, okay, well, when you can't turn to your side, a lot of the time, that's because your partner either has a bicep in your head and they're turning your head in the opposite direction, or maybe they have a cross collar grip that is forcing your head in the opposite direction, or um, maybe their chest is pinning your shoulders too well so that you can't turn your shoulders to get to your side. And they say, you know what? I think he had his arm on my neck, like you were saying, with the bicep. And then say, okay, cool. So that's the problem. You were trying to elbow escape, but you couldn't turn to your side because your partner had uh, shoulder pressure in your neck. Their bicep was on your face and they were turning your head in the opposite direction. So then how do we deal with that problem? And then we can start working backwards from there. It's a lot easier to, um, it's a lot easier for them to remember at least the basic problem. It's a lot easier for me to sort of help diagnose more specifically what the problem is. And then we can both work together towards finding a good solution for that problem. But it all starts with them being able to have some sort of video camera going on in their head where they're trying to remember what happened during a roll. The more experience you gain in jiu-jitsu and the more experience you gain in uh, using your metal potential video camera, the more accurately you're going to remember what kind of problems you come across and what happened during the rolls. Uh, hold on one second. This house is absolutely beautiful. I love this place. Um, all right, anyway. Um, so when you gain more experience, you start to remember, you start to have a more detailed map of your plan of jiu-jitsu from each major position. And then the more detailed your map is, the easier it is to remember where you had to detour from your plans during that map, where your partner forced you to detour, um, where you discover a new wrinkle that maybe you can exploit later on. And so it all comes back to having some kind of plan when you're doing jiu-jitsu. If, um, if, and then, you know, with experience, like I said before, like uh, experience in jiu-jitsu gives you, experience in jiu-jitsu with the thought process of having a plan gives you an easier, it makes it easier for you to have a roadmap of what you're trying to do and makes it easier to remember because you have a plan that you're trying to remember. But also practicing the skill set of remembering gets better and better too because you're actively trying to do that thing over and over and over again. Instead of like, there's the skill set of having, of coming up with a plan for yourself. There's the skill set of sticking to your plan when you're rolling. And then the separate skill set of remembering what happened while you're rolling. And so I think all three of those things are very important to practice um, when you're rolling. And they all, they all develop over time with practice, but you can't really neglect any one of those things because a plan that doesn't get applied during rolls isn't a plan that you can work on at all. A plan that gets applied during rolls but isn't remembered during rolls is uh, helpful 
but again it doesn't give you the chance to later on look at what went well what went well what didn't go well and what can be improved in the plan and so it loses the benefit of, of feedback and uh, improvement and so um, I always wonder if these things actually work when you hit these buttons across the street um, but so anyway that's that's sort of my idea about having an internal video camera when you're rolling so my challenge to you if you're a new student is sit down write down one high percentage technique from every major position that you know how to do and we talked about high percentage in the last walking tour video so if you're not sure what I'm talking about go watch that and then when you when you have one move from every major position like standing position top of the mount bottom of the mount top of some kind of guard bottom of some kind of guard top of side control bottom of side control uh, positive back position negative back position once you have a move from each of those spots then when you roll turn on that mental video camera and then don't try to remember everything that happened at first just try to pick one or two important points that you can remember from the specific positions that you were working from so for example instead of trying to remember you know let's say you spent I don't know uh, three minutes on bottom of the mountain position instead of trying to remember every every single thing that happened like they put their right hand in my collar and I tried to turn to my right but I couldn't because the hand was on my collar and then I tried to turn to my left but they grabbed I don't know they, they put their other hand in my collar like instead of trying to remember every detail just pick one thing at first like okay I was there for three minutes I remember I tried to elbow escape and I tried to elbow escape to my right but their right hand was in my collar so I couldn't turn that way without getting choked just remember that one detail and then you have one problem that you can work towards solving when uh when you roll again and then you can also brainstorm ideas when you're outside of jiu-jitsu on how to solve that problem and then you can test those ideas next time you roll with that same person um, so keep it simple have a video camera turned on when you're rolling and then build up in complexity from there as you gain more experience and you fill out your roadmap more and more all right well i gotta get some cat food so i will talk to you all later bye all right i'm back i got cat food so uh, I thought I would add on a little bit, um, just briefly, uh, to what I was talking about. So we were talking about the internal video camera when you're rolling. And one of the, so some of the benefits to that are such that I've already mentioned, um, you know, with remembering what happened to your roles and how to improve from, you know, training session to training session based on remembering what your partner did, blah, 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 having a sentence. Uh, fixing your sentences but one of the other additional benefits that you're going to notice is that when you would try to apply this thought process to watching uh, video footage film study and remembering what happens in matches you're going to start to build a mental archive of techniques problems solutions sentences based on what you see in your film study so for example um, if I watch uh, Gordon Ryan's recent match versus Jacob Couch and I start to thank you I start to um, so I watched that match and I watched it twice so far and when I'm watching it I'm looking for specific sentences that are relevant to the game that I play so for example I and one of my students uh, plays is working on top of the mount position right now specifically top of the mount going to high mount like an s mount and then attacking arm bars from there so when i watch the gordon ryan versus jacob couch match it's much easier for me to remember what happened in pretty good detail during the match because i'm watching that match from the perspective of somebody who is working on playing mount to raise the elbows above their head to s mount to arm bar which is ultimately what Gordon Ryan was working towards as the match ended. And the more, the better vocabulary I have and the better sentence, sentence um, repertoire I have in my jiu-jitsu, the better, the more developed and 
fine-tuned game and series of roadmaps from position to position to position with clear goals that I have. Uh, the more detailed map that I have in Jiu-Jitsu of every neighborhood, the more easily I'm going to be able to remember what happens during uh, my film study sessions, especially if I can find some way to connect what's happening in the, in the film footage to some part of my game that I'm watching. Um, or if it's something that is a novel area that I haven't yet explored, damn, dead possum, um, a novel area that I haven't explored yet, then that might also stick in my memory too. But it's going to stick in my memory as part of a sentence. So it's not really about remembering specific words anymore. Although you do remember words sometimes when they, when they solve a specific problem, but you only remember the words when they're unique in some way or they're relevant to something in your own jujitsu. So that practice of building an internal video camera extends to, uh, extends the film study in that way where it gets easier and easier and easier to remember what happens during MMA fights and jujitsu matches. Yo, bud, how you doing? Yo, yo, what's up, good to man? see ya. Oh, good to see you, man. Have a good one. Be safe. Thank you, you too, sir. Thanks, buddy. Um, sorry to yell. That's my buddy. Um, yeah, so it's, it's about practicing remembering things. It's about having a context to remember those things. This is kind of a cool building right here. Um, having a context to remember those things, which makes remembering things much, much easier. And then applying that to a bunch of different contexts, like film study, watching MMA fights, jiu-jitsu matches, watching live jiu-jitsu tournaments if you're at an event. And, uh, you know, you might face somebody later on in that event. Then you might watch their matches and, you know, pick out the parts, pick out the sentences that are relevant to you. And then um, you'll more easily remember those parts so that when you go against them later on, you can remember, oh yeah, I remember that person, they, uh, they pulled reverse daily heva guard. And then when their opponent dropped down to one knee, they played half guard with a knee shield instead of an underhook. So then when you compete against them, you can say, okay, they play, they pull to reverse daily heva guard and they have a strong knee shield half guard. So. I'm going to keep, I'm going to practice distance passing with Toriano and leg drag instead so they don't get a chance to get to their, to get to their knee shield. Um, so anyway, that's just you know, a little bit of further thoughts on what we were talking about earlier. I'm going to head out now. Uh, I'll talk to you later.